Each year, NGS testing becomes increasingly important for identifying subtypes and treatment options in hematologic malignancies. We spoke with Stephanie McElhaney, Medical Director of LabCorp's Brentwood, Tennessee Lab, about the lab's hematology testing and about the support they offer in choosing tests and interpreting results. For hematopathology, there's there are really three foundational tests that we use on virtually every bone marrow. So we will look at the morphology, we'll look at the flow cytometry, and we'll look at the cytogenetics. And that's pretty much the base uh, that we do for every bone marrow. So for the morphology, that's the hematopathologist looking at the glass slides under the microscope. The foundational test number two is flow cytometry. And flow cytometry is a really powerful tool for hematopathology. The power of it is that we're able to look at multiple different markers, both on a cell surface and within the cell at the same time um, in, in real time. And then the third thing that we typically do on every bone marrow is going to be cytogenetics. And we're looking there for either a normal or abnormal karyotype. And if the karyotype is abnormal, is it a characteristic sort of hallmark karyotype for a specific disease entity? That's when we start deciding, are we happy with those foundational three tests. Is the morphology, the flow, and the cytogenetics going to allow us to make a definitive interpretation for a specific patient? If the answer is no, that's when we decide what other test needs to happen. And, and perhaps what needs to happen is we just need to call the client and ask for more clinical information and discuss the client and discuss the patient. There are more and more entities that are becoming molecularly defined. So the ability to run next generation sequencing or NGS on samples is really critical these days for the diagnosis in hematopathology because a lot of these entities have either you know, essential diagnostic criteria that are based on NGS results or at least you know, suggested or desirable diagnostic criteria that are based on NGS results. And those affect the, the treatment options? Yeah, absolutely. So NGS results are geared towards not only the being able to give a molecular-based diagnosis when that's appropriate, but they're also geared towards providing prognostic information for the patients, like how is the patient really expected to proceed in their you know, course of their disease, and also predictive information and therapeutic selection information. And having that knowledge up front allows for the clinicians to more effectively choose therapy for patients. With the samples that you see, what kind of NGS testing is it? Are, are there panels or um, you know larger tests? What's available for you to use? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, we have three larger NGS panels that are really heme specific. We have our myeloid NGS panel, which we use for myeloid diseases such as uh, myelodysplastic syndromes, myeloproliferative neoplasms, acute myeloid leukemia, and other myeloid type diseases. Um, that panel is used on a daily basis um, because within the myeloid part of hematopathology, classification systems, those diagnoses are, are more heavily dependent upon NGS results. For lymphoid entities, we also have the lymphoid NGS panel, which is becoming more and more useful for lymphoid entities. Um, there are a number of genes like we talked about before, or there are a number of genes that have um, implications for therapy selection because certain gene mutations will be related to certain drug resistance. And what do you report out once you've done all this testing? What's included in your reports? So for heme path, um, like we talked about, heme path diagnoses these days, the current uh, classification systems are very layered, right? So we're going to have information coming from morphology. We're going to have information coming from flow cytometry. Those are two different reports. And we also have the cytogenetics reports. That's a third report. We may or may not have fish results that need to be incorporated. 
and we may have multiple different molecular tests that have to be incorporated. For us, you know, each, each result is released as it is ready. Once all of the tests for a specific patient are complete, we will get an alert that everything is done. Now is the time to go back and again, circle back around and look at this patient. What we try to do is provide a summary report at the end of all of this. It will list all of the individual tests, but then it also allows the hematopathologist to then take all of these different pieces of an overall puzzle and put it all together into a final integrated uh, interpretation for the patient. And also to provide like additional comments and to really point out those things that we may have discovered that are prognostically significant or may specifically guide therapy choice in a patient. Our hematopathologists are, are open to and accept every day phone calls from, from other pathologists looking for advice on what's the next best test, you know, what do I need to do to shore up this diagnosis? Um, both, you know, just as a phone call sometimes, um, and sometimes they end up sending us the whole case because they want, you know, another set of expert eyes to look at a case. All of our hematopathologists are American Board of Pathology certified heme paths. Um, I actually added up the, the cumulative experience for my group the other day, and our location alone has more than 200 years of cumulative heme path experience. So, I have to say, I'm, I feel very fortunate to practice in this environment and to be able to truly focus on my, cho my chosen specialty of heme path. Um, so I would say our group has truly great breadth and depth of heme path knowledge to provide that deep comprehensive evaluation of heme path cases, which is often referred to in LabCorp as a case or CASE, which would be the Comprehensive Analysis and Service Expertise. You know, I think for many areas in pathology, the evolution of readily available NGS testing um, has really opened up a new world. You know, it's, it's very exciting because I think that we're able to provide much better information for individual patients, for their individual journeys, and hopefully allow better therapy selection for each patient individually based on their specific disease, on their specific tumor cells. Um, I think that's the exciting part of it that you know we we strive to do every day. I think the daunting part of it is it is so much information and there are so many genes out there and there's so many correlations between what things mean um, that, you know, it's, it's, it's a drinking from a fire hydrant. So it's, it's a lot of information to take in all at once. So I think that's the role of our hematopathologist when it comes to our reports is we're trying to take all of that vast amount of information, potentially vast amount of information and really narrowing it down to what's most important and what does it really mean for the patient.